So welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming for this uh, last session of the day, uh, or last tools in action session of the day. Um, we are going to talk about Docker tooling for Java developers, or for Java developers more in general. Um, about me, my name is Xavier Coulon. My official title is Senior Software Engineer, which basically means that I am a developer and I have some gray hair. Um, don't get me wrong, I like my job, I just keep my hair short. Um, I've been working at Red Hat for four years. Uh, I've been working on the JBoss Tools uh, project, which is um, a set of uh, Eclipse plugins for Java EE technology. So we provide you with open source plugins for uh, JPA, JAXRS, uh, GSF, Batch, um, CDI, uh, web services in general. Uh, we also provide you with um, um, plugins for mobile technology around Cordova, for Aquilian for testing, uh, Forge, um, and well, a lot of other things as well. Uh, yeah, and um, as we'll see later, uh, Docker tooling and also OpenShift tooling. So I'm also working on the Docker tooling at Eclipse.org, um, and I have a side project which is called uh, Lambdamatic, which is about using Lambda expressions to query and update data on MongoDB. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick introduction about Docker. So we all share the same concepts, and then we'll go to the demo in which I will show how we can use uh, Docker inside Eclipse. So the main Docker components are um, images, containers, daemon, registries, and clients. So, Docker images. Docker images are really the build components in Docker. Um, images are read-only templates, and the interesting thing about Docker is that it, about Docker images is that they are made of uh, an assembly of layers. So, you're going to start with something like a base layer, which is the operating system that you want to use. So, it may be something like CentOS, uh, Fedora, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Debian, whatever you like. And then on top of this, you are going to add another layer to make a new image on, on this first image, which will be maybe something like um, adding a JVM on top of it. So it's, it's going to be your second layer. Your third layer will be probably something like your application server, oh, something like uh, Wildfly. And then on top of it, you will have a fourth layer, which will be um, your application itself. So this is a combination of layers. The interesting thing about Docker is um, if you have multiple images which rely on the same uh, base layers, um, they're going to be cached on your machine. So you don't, you don't need to pull them as many times as you want to use it. It's like if you use Maven, it's like having a local uh, cache of your Maven uh, dependency, Maven jars on your machine. Now, Docker containers. So Docker containers are the run components. So they are based on images. So you take an image and you say, I want to run this image, and it's going to give you a container. So your container is going to uh, contain your application and it's all its dependencies. The interesting thing about Docker is that all your containers will run in the same, or you can have multiple containers in the same virtual machine. They will all be uh, isolated, one, one from each other, but they will share the same kernel features. Containers can be managed, so you can start, stop, uh, create, of course, destroy, pause, unpause. And one very important thing about containers is that they are immutable in the sense that once you started a container, you cannot change its configuration. <laughs> um, but um, containers are also disposable. So when you don't need it anymore, you just trash it. OK, Docker daemon. So Docker itself is going to uh, rely heavily on uh, Linux features such as uh, namespace and cgroups. So Docker needs Linux to run. So if you have a machine which is based on Linux, uh, something like Fedora or whatever on your laptop or um, on your server, um, you can run Docker uh, immediately on top of it, and it's going to run as a daemon. If you have a laptop with uh, Mac OS or Windows, you will need to run ma uh, Docker inside a virtual machine. So it will be something probably like uh, VirtualBox. So VirtualBox, inside this VirtualBox, uh, you will have uh, Linux, and inside this Linux, you will have Docker daemon. So Docker is going to run as a daemon, and you are going to interact with Docker uh, using some client. So it will be something like a uh, command line interface, or some tooling, such as Eclipse tooling, as we'll see later, or maybe some Maven tooling that is going to um, do some processing. 
And we have this kind of diagram here where you see a uh, Docker client is going to send commands to a Docker daemon, which manages some containers and images. And maybe this Docker daemon is going to contact, uh, to connect to a Docker hub to pull and push images. Which brings me to Docker registry, registries, which are the distribution components. There are some public instances such as Docker Hub, and you can have your, your private uh, registry in your uh, company if you want to share images, but not uh, with the outside world. You can see Docker registries as uh, Maven repositories if you're fam uh, uh, familiar with this kind of thing, such as uh, um, uh, Maven Central or Nexus if you want to run it in your s inside your company. Okay. So the benefits of Docker. Why is it so popular? First, you don't need, when you run a container, you don't need to boot an hypervisor to, for a single container. So you are going to save a lot of CPU and uh, memory, and you're not going to have this overhead of an hypervisor such, a, such, as, <laughs> such as VirtualBox. It's not helping me. This. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, have, uh, you consume less memory and uh, less uh, CPU resources, and so you have a better density and infrastructure in utilization. Okay, let's have a quick stop. Okay, uh, so let's carry on. So, other benefits of Docker, um, you're going to package your, uh, your full stack of your application inside a single container. So, as I said before, we, you have this, all these layers of images, so you are going to have your OS, your JVM, your application server, and your application inside a single container. Um, this container is going to be portable across environments, so you can have um, this container running on your machine, on your developer machine, and you can have it uh, built on your continuous integration and deployed on, on your staging production environment. You're not going to have your full application inside a single container. The pattern for Docker is uh, something like having a single a process per container. So maybe you will have your application in a container and your database in another container, for example. But inside this application container, you have all your stack, OS, JVM, with everything you need, very specific. And the thing is, you have the same uh, stack on your machine and on your uh, other environments. So this is uh, a good way to have no more, uh, but it works on my machine kind of argument. So now let's talk about Docker at Eclipse. So um, there is some Docker tooling at Eclipse, which is part of a project named Linux Tools, but um, it also works on Mac and Windows as well. It's been put there uh, at the beginning, at its inception, because it's been started by the Linux Tools team uh, um, at Eclipse. But the tooling works on all platforms. The idea is to make Docker accessible from Eclipse, um, and I will show you a demo just afterwards. Um, the idea also is to work with existing tooling, so Docker itself, of course, but also Docker Machine, uh, mainly. Um, we don't provide, uh, this Docker tooling does not provide uh, all the tooling, all the wizards that cover all um, commands and all switches that you may have from command line, but it's really focused on de developer experience. And we'll see uh, uh, what we can do with it. And it's also, um, the, ba the, the aim is to be reused by other plugins. So for example, at Jabos Tools, there is a team of people working on OpenShift tooling. OpenShift V3 is uh, really, uh, is heavily based on Docker and Kubernetes, and so they're reusing some of this tooling for the OpenShift tooling. So if you want to use Docker on your machine, the easiest way and uh, fastest way is to go to docker.com and install their new Docker toolbox, which gives you everything like Docker, Docker Machine, Docker Swarm, Docker Compose, and it's going to set up a virtual box for you if you need it, uh, if you need it on your machine, if you have Mac or, or Windows. And for Docker tooling at Eclipse, Eclipse Docker tooling, um, you have two ways to grab it. Uh, you go to eclipse.org slash Linux tools, and, or you go to uh, tools.jboss.org or um, 
JBoss tools on Eclipse Marketplace because we mirror uh, the same tooling. And it's now time for a demo. Okay. Is it readable? Um, hopefully it's readable. Okay, so we are here in JBoss Tools uh, 4.3 final, and I put some uh, Docker tooling, some very latest uh, Docker tooling that I worked on uh, very recently. Um, we have this new uh, this, uh, Docker Explorer view at the bottom left of my window, and what we can do is uh, open a connection. This wizard here, um, is going to uh, detect automatically, detect, detect automatically um, some settings uh, on my machine. So I have um, um, environment variables for, do, for boot to Docker because this is what we initially supported. So I have these environment variables in my uh, init script file so they can be detected. Uh, but we also have now this search uh, button here which is going to find uh, some Docker machines that are running. I have other Docker machines that are not running, but I have this one here, and I'm going to pick this uh, DevOps demo one. So it's going to find my, uh, the name of this um, um, Docker machine. I can test my connection, and if I needed to do something different, some, if I needed uh, some custom settings, I could put if I were on Linux, I could put some Linux socket pass or some TCP connection with some certificates to connect uh, somewhere else. Uh, I'm just going to keep the default settings. And so I have this uh, in my tree here at the bottom left. Um, I can see my connection. So I can have multiple connections, of course, on this tree view. Um, I can see that I have two images, but I could pull some images as well, and so I can connect to uh, Docker Hub and pull some images. So maybe I know uh, the, ex the exact name and maybe exact tag of the image I want to pull. Otherwise, we have this search feature here. Uh, and so I could do something like uh, Wildfly, search for Wildfly. So it's going to connect and grab and give me all the existing um, images. And if I click on Next here, it's going to connect again to Docker Hub using uh, another API, and it's going to show me all existing tags that, uh, you, uh, that exist for this, um, for this image, and I can see that I already have uh, 9.0.2. final. so we are going to play with this, with this one. I'm not going to um, pull it again. So this is how you pull images. Okay, so I have this image now, and I'm going to run it. So I get this wizard here which is probably the, uh, one of the most interesting wizards. This wizard is going to uh, analyze, uh, does something like Docker inspect, and inspects the image I'm going to run, and it's going to show me all, all the settings that I can, can uh, change. So this is a command I can, I'm going to run. I'm going to publish all exposed ports uh, on this machine. So by default, it's going to pick some random ports, but if I uncheck this box here, I can see that Port 8080 of my Wildfly is going to be mapped on, my, on port 8080 of this virtual box running underneath. So I can, I can connect to this very specific port. And I can do, uh, I can connect to another, uh, I can link this container to another container if I had, I had one. I can mount volume and I can uh, specify some environment variables. Okay, so I'm starting this container. And this container is started in Docker running inside VirtualBox on my machine, but all the streams are sent back to my uh, console here. And I can see that I have some Wildfly running. I now have, obviously, a container here, which has a random name because I didn't specify any name from this, for this container, so it's going to be Evil Corona this time. And I can see that I have uh, one port which is um, exposed. So on my, uh, from the outside of VirtualBox, it's going to be port 32771, which is going to be mapped, uh, forwarded to port 8080 on my container. So I can open this in my web browser, and I can see that I have Wildfly running inside a container um, on my machine. Okay. So we... I've shown you how we can start uh, Wildfly um, very quickly. Now, let's do something a bit more complicated and a, a little more interesting as well. Let's say I have an application. 
And I'm going to deploy it on Wi-Fi, but I want to have a Postgre database um, connected. I want to use a Postgre database, uh, and I'm going to use two containers linked together. So I have this uh, application here, uh, which I pulled from Jebos Central. So Jebos Central is this thing you can see here, this main view. Um, it's like a, a portal and a, a welcome page that we provide you. Um, you can search for um, uh, examples. So let's say I, I put something like JaxRS, and it's going to give me a list of a lot of examples that come inside Jebos Tools. So if you want to start with some technology, you just type uh, JaxRS, CDI, JSF, or whatever you like, and boom, you get examples. And uh, if you do something like uh, you click on this one, it's going to uh, set up, launch a wizard, and install this uh, project in your uh, workspace. So this is what I've done here, and I have my application. So we'll go to back to the application a little later. Now, um, Whitefly um, has support for H2 database out of the box, which is fine, but we want to, have, uh, we want to connect to a Postgre database. And there is no Postgre driver in Wildfly. So we need to build our own image uh, to include this module. So we are going to look at this. Uh, so I have a first Docker file here, which is going to start from an existing image, which is the one we've run before. So it's JBoss Wildfly 9.0.2.final. And what I'm going to do in this Docker file, Docker file is what you use to build images. Okay. So I'm going to say that I want to create a Postgre module directory, uh, which is going to be this one, uh, slash opt, slash jboss, et cetera, et cetera. And inside, I'm going to copy this uh, driver and this uh, module.xml file. So I'm going to have this new uh, this driver in my Wildfly uh, server. It's like I'm going to customize Wildfly for my needs. Okay. I'm also going to uh, uh, replace standalone.xml with this one here, which is going to contain, I'm, I'm scrolling down uh, until here, it's going to contain a new data source definition here. And as you can see, we are going to use some environment variables. So this is a feature of Wildfly. Wildfly, you can have something like this in your um, <coughs> standalone.xml, so slash uh, bracket, and dot something, and Wildfly at startup is going to look at environment variables. And so we have this uh, specific um, environment variables uh, with some uh, something that looks a bit weird, like postgre underscore port, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So we have TCP address, TCP port, and here username, password. We'll look at this thing just afterwards, but uh, this is how we uh, package our um, Wildfly, how we built our new Wildfly and uh, add some specific uh, custom configuration. So now I have this Docker file and I'm going to run it as a Docker image. So this is the first time we run uh, this Docker image. And so uh, as you've seen before on the, uh, <coughs> on the diagram, we are here as a Docker client and we need to send this Docker uh, file and all of this context, this directory, this Wildfly directory, to a Docker daemon, which is going to do the real processing. We are, Eclipse is not going to do any processing, okay? So we select a connection and we are going to give a repo or image name, which is going to be um, Wildfly dash postgres. Uh, okay. And I'm going to give it the same tag. I'm going to keep this one as my initial wall fly. Okay, and uh, okay, it's already done. Well, actually, it's very fast. It's just a matter of copying a few files. Um, and we see now here that in the, uh, we have a new image, uh, Wildfly Postgre, uh, here. And I think, by the way, we can inspect. It's like inspecting. We can see. Uh, Something like if you do something like Docker inspect for command line, we, you will have uh, same same result. Okay, so we have an image which has support for um, um, Postgres. Uh, Wildfire well, is going to have support for Postgres, but as a developer, um, I want to have a little more. We can we can use this image on on this machine, and we can share it with you can we can use the same image in continuous integration and maybe pro production environment. 
But as a developer, I want to have some uh, extra features for my development purpose, such as maybe debugging, uh, managing, um, to publish some stuff, etc., etc. So I have this second uh, Docker file, which is um, extending the first one, the one we just created before. Okay, so it's Wildfly Postgres on the first line. And this time I'm going to expose two other ports, 8787 for debugging and 9990 for uh, management. Here I'm going to specify a volume, which is a, um, the path for this volume is a um, deployment directory for Wildfly. This is where Wildfly looks for uh, WAR files or exploded WAR files. And I'm going to use a custom command, which is uh, almost the same, but with uh, uh, especially this uh, dash dash debug flag, which is going to say that we allow remote debugging at, at startup. So once again, um, we run uh, an image. And I'm going to call it this time uh, pos Wildfly Postgre dev. OK, so of course I made a typo somewhere. Ah. OK, I mistyped Wildfly, my, my, my bad. OK, so it's not, not a big deal. OK, so now I have my image with, uh, uh, OK, so history will keep that it's a wrong name, but uh, it works the same. OK, so now we have our um, Wildfly dash postgre dash development image uh, ready to run. So I'm going to start um, Postgre, my Postgre container for my database. I'm going to give it a name this time. I'm going to name it Postgre or Postgres. Okay, let's go for Postgres. And I'm going to pass it some uh, environment variables. So it will be Postgres username. I'm going to be very original and say Postgre and Postgre password. And it's going to be uh, something secret. Okay. So we start this container. And so now we have a database, um, a container, a Postgre container running. Um, and we can see that, well, there is some port, but in fact, we don't really care about it. Okay, now we can start our uh, Wildfly container. So let's call it Wildfly and let's not make a typo this time. So as you can see, we have this uh, command. Uh, it's going to use this command with dash dash debug. We are going to expose all ports, uh, and we are going to keep the same mapping 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 90, uh, 87, 87, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to link this container, this Wildfly container to my Postgre container. And this is where the uh, Postgres um, name that we've seen before in, in variables is, uh, really matters. And here I'm going to mount uh, volume. So this container volume is going to be um, mounted on my host, and it's going to be this uh, deployment directory here. OK. So Wildfly is starting, and we have here as you can see, we have this uh, Postgre SQL DS um, database uh, connector pool of connections, which is ready to use. So we have our infrastructure. We have a Postgre uh, container, Wildfly container linked together. Everything is ready for deployment. So I have my application here. Um, if you remember, this is, oh yeah, maybe I can show you. Um, so if I. We don't have support for Docker exec yet. That's something we are working on, but for now, uh, I'm going to use command line. So uh, let me do uh, Docker PS, and I have Wildfly. So if I do something like Docker exec um, dash it, uh, so Wildfly, and I'm going to execute uh, a bash inside this container. And if I do something like env uh, rep postgres, so I can see all my all some a lot of environment variables. Um, oh, 
Is it better? Okay. A lot of environment variables that have been created by Docker when linking this Postgre container. And these environment variables are the, one that, the ones that we've, we can see here in my standalone XML. So this is how things are bound together. Okay. So let's move on quickly. Um, so I have my application here. Um, I made a few changes, including this one here in uh, persistence.xml. I'm using this PostgreSQL data source. I um, changed a few things here so I can see what's happening. And I'm going to create a server adapter. Um, I'm going to connect to a Wi-Fi 9. Um, so this is going to be changed afterwards. So one thing you need to be very careful about is here you need to check this box, server lifecycle is externally managed, because when we create this server adapter, we are not going to start a new server, we are going to connect to an existing server. Um, I'm not going to deploy my application now because uh, I need to make a few changes. Here I need to change my host name and put the IP address for my uh, VM. So it's going to be 168.99.0.0. Uh, okay, I don't need it. And in this deployment here, I'm going to select this and this to say that um, I want to use. Um, oh no, it's not correct. Okay, so now I have my server. I'm going to add and remove this application. So this application is going to be deployed on a local directory, which is mounted, and my uh, Wildfly container can see it. So so this is where it does. Did it work? Or? Oh, sorry, I forgot to start it. I, I need to start it. Okay, so let me publish. Okay, so you see, my container just saw, um, just saw that uh, an application has been deployed and can access to it, can deploy it, actually. Um, and if I go here to my server adapter, uh, I can show in, in my web browser, and I have my application deployed on a container in Wildfly in Docker connected to a uh, Postgre container. Um, if we go very quickly, uh, I had a few things, a few extra things to show you, but I won't have time. Um, I can put a breakpoint in my code and I can run a remote debugger using connecting on the port 8787 that you've seen before. And if I go uh, and click on refresh here, uh, I can debug my application in the container, okay? I didn't have time to show you how uh, other things, but. I can, I can also, my point is you can debug your application deployed in a container on a, in, uh, in Docker. And I have uh, just uh, uh, two minutes left, so I'm going um, to the conclusion. Uh, live reload, I didn't have time to show you, I can show you later. Um, so uh, we've seen that we can manage connection to Docker daemons, we can search and pull images, uh, we can build custom images using Docker files, we can run images, and we can have specific ports, volume links. Uh, we can manage containers, stop, start, pause, and pause, kill. Well, I didn't show everything, but oh, you get the idea. Uh, and we can use um, JBoss Tools server adapter and live reload. I didn't have time to show it, but I can show it later uh, to publish an application. And we can use the uh, Eclipse remote debugger to connect to, a con uh, to debug in a container. So if you want to know more about this, uh, let's get in touch together. And um, we have, uh, well, JBoss Tools is very consistent, as you can see. We have uh, at JBoss Tools on Twitter uh, and JBoss Tools on IRC. Um, if you have any question, um, you can ping us here on my uh, Twitter handle or on JBoss Tools dev uh, list and Linux Tools dev list as well. And uh, we have one minute for questions, if anyone has a question. Okay, no question. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, I will appreciate any feedback. If you have a good feedback, you can rate this, uh, this talk, of course, uh, if you have a, a bad feedback as well. But uh, 
if you have some feedback, I will be very happy uh, to hear from you so I can improve my uh, presentation. Thank you very much and have a good DevOps. <laughs>